Hi there, and welcome back to Branches. Now we're on week three. We've already done, what does it mean to know Jesus Christ? An intimate relationship with Him. Not just knowing about Him or knowing things that we believe related to Him, but if we actually have a relationship with Him. To know is to be intimately connected to Him. Also, last week we talked about to trust Him. What does it mean to trust Jesus Christ? That means to pour everything we are, everything we think, everything we dream, into his arms and then we obey out of the trust same thing with parents you want your kids to trust you and then obey according to the relationship you have with them now we go to week three and this is one that uh, is really central to faith but it's one we don't really talk about a whole heck of a lot or if we do we make it this kind of hyper spiritual deal what does it mean to love jesus christ if you've been doing your notebook You've gone through these five days of reflections and reading and thinking and answering questions about this. There's no question this is thoroughly biblical. It's it's central to what does it mean to be a disciple of Jesus. Knowing him in an intimate way and trusting him. Wonderful, important. Deuteronomy chapter 6, starting at verse 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God, the Lord is one. Verse 5 of Deuteronomy 6, this is Moses. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. Incredible commandment that we are called to love God. This this affect, this emotion that's more than just emotion. What does it mean to love God? Well, Jesus gets asked this question. What's the greatest commandment? And what you realize is, you look at the life of Jesus as the religious leaders knew in their minds what they felt like the greatest commandment was. So what Jesus said, they were trying to trick him, but he still replies this. So one came up to him in Matthew chapter 22 and said that, Teacher, trying to test him, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Verse 36 of Matthew 22. Jesus replies, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. Here's an interesting line in verse 40 of Matthew 22. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. The law and prophets, the law is the first five books of the Old Testament. The prophets Prophets are everything from from those five books until the end of what we call the Old Testament. So what Jesus said is the entire Old Testament hang on these two commandments. The word hang actually is the same kind of concept that's used to hang a heavy picture. You don't, don't just have one nail and you hang it on it. It's you have two nails that are so essential, so connected that they share the force of that heavy picture on those two nails. On these two commandments together hang the entire Old Testament. In other words, what Jesus is saying is the first and greatest commandment, it's not hierarchical. And by the way, when you get to the second one, love your neighbors yourself, that that's less important. So what does it mean to love God? Well, first of all, you notice in Deuteronomy chapter 6, what we see is there's some kind of slightly different language. Love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. Then you go to Matthew, and Jesus says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. What a lot of people, and I put this in one of the uh, things that we wrote this week that you read, is a lot of people try to figure out, well, which is it? Do I love him with all my strength, or do I love him with all my mind? We actually are trained in kind of a Western way of thinking, almost everybody watching this, that, that God wants us to love him and he wants us to love him with our heart. Okay, that means we feel love. We want to love him with our soul. What, we don't even know what that means. We love him with our mind. That's cognitively loving him. We, we love him with our strength. But to the Hebrew, what they recognized was God didn't create us with all these different parts of us, kind of like Inside Out, the kids movie. God created us as one whole person. And what he's calling us to do is to love him with the fullness of who we are. And these various expressions of that, soul, heart, 
are expressions of loving God from the depth of who I am. And you can look back in your notebook, and I talk about that in your notebook. But also, why strength is turned into mind, it's because they are related to each other. My mind is not just cognitively what I think about something. My mind is related to my will. My heart is related to my will and my mind, my soul. The Greek word is psyche, is created, the de is talking about the depth of who I am. So all these words actually interrelate. God wants you to love him with the fullness of your being. And what does it mean to love him? Well, it means that I take my emotions towards him, my, the things that make me human when I feel and when I'm committed, when I'm convicted, when I'm joyous, when I'm desperate, all these wild emotions that all of us feel and experience, to place those emotions and connect those to my heart, my will, my soul, that all of my emotions I hand to him. See, that's when you know somebody, the way we've talked about knowing Christ, and I've compared it to knowing a spouse or a really good friend, it's more than knowing about its relationship. And as we grow in that relationship, we grow to love that person. And that means we open ourselves up to the fullness of who we are. God wants us to open ourselves up to the fullness of who we are, to hand to him, to focus on him. So, so how do you love God with your soul? It's when you, what do you love to do? Well, when does your heart start beating faster? I'm a new grandparent, got two beautiful little granddaughters right now, and, and I'm telling you, every time I'm with them, something happens in my heart, and I can't explain the love. In fact, I heard it described the grandparenting as I had a hole in my heart I never knew I had that's being filled up by these two little girls. Is there somebody in your life, or some person, or an activity, or a game, or a sport, or surfing, or whatever it is you do? where you know that the fullness of who you are begins to soar. That's what it means to love Jesus Christ. And that spills over in how we love and treat others. So may this week, as you talk about this, try to connect your love for God in your, when your heart soars. Hearing a song, taking a walk, seeing the beach, watching a child, whatever it is for you. That is what you hand off to Jesus Christ. Love him with your heart, soul, mind, and strength.